Thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate that. I'm going to examine your legs, Siobhan, okay? And I'm going to move you around, but don't let me hurt you at all, okay? Now, normally in an exam situation, I'd probably expose a little bit more, a little bit higher up on the leg, but at the moment, we're just going to roll up your jeans to this point. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to look for are, is, is wasting or fasciculations or jumpiness of the muscles, if you like, and look for pes cavus. And I don't see that, so there's no pain in the legs at the moment, Siobhan, is there? No. I'm going to move the legs around a little bit, yeah. and then I'm going to pick them up fairly smartly. So you can see that the leg is quite stiff here. I'm going to pick it up there. And most legs will bend fairly easily in the middle, but the ones are a little stiff, but they're better than they were. Then I'm going to check while I'm here for clonus. So I make a right angle at the knee and a right angle at the ankle, and I gently, gently give it a little flick. And as you can see here, it goes into a little bit of a spasm like that, and that's classic clonus. Am I hurting you? No. Great. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. And you can relax that down, and it'll stop now in a moment. Similarly here, it's a bit stiff, the leg. And there's a little bit of clonus, but not maybe as pronounced as the other side. Okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to relax that down. Thanks. So if the tone is increased, I'm assuming this is bilateral. Uh, they, these are bilateral changes. And my assumption is, I know Siobhan well, but uh, that this is a paraparesis. But to prove that, I'm looking for some weakness. So can you lift your right leg straight up in the air, just like a ballet dancer? Keep it up there. Don't let me hurt you now. Okay, well done. Now push it down straight into the bed. Keep it down. Don't let me lift it. Well done. Can you bend up your right knee? And keep it bent. Don't let me straighten it. Well, good. And now kick it out straight. Go on. OK. Now with your right foot, can you cock it up this way? Cock up your foot to your head. That's it. Keep it up there. Keep it up. Tiny bit weak there, but not too bad. And push me away with your foot. Point it out to the wall. Down that way. Good. Keep it pushed out there. Well done. So the power is actually very good. Uh, it's just the coordination, uh, the, the stiffness is there. Let's check coordination. Can you take your heel, Siobhan, and I want you to lift it up and place it on the side of your knee and then run it down your leg and then bring it out and do the same again. So in your own time. That's it. Down the leg and down, then out to touch my finger and then start at the top again. There you have it. And again. A little, you can see there's a mild ataxia there. Um, and then I'm going to do the reflexes. Okay. So I'm going to bend up your knee for a little. I'm looking at the muscle group here. And this should be quite brisk. And the same again here. Should be brisk because we know there's increased tone, there's clonus, and uh, there's incoordination. Okay. With your right knee, can you bend it up? And it's best to break the instructions into component parts. And can you flop your knee out towards me? So I'm going to take your foot and relax it as much as you can. That's perfect. And I'm going to give you a little tap. You can see I even offset clonus there. Thank you. Same again on the left side. Up and away. Well done. You know what you're doing. And it's a very brisk reflex. OK. Now, as I always say, the horrible thing is a little scratch of the foot. And I'm expecting both planters to go up because I've got increased tone, increased reflexes, clonus. So I take your foot gently. And I'm starting on the outside of your foot there, and I'm going to bring this stick out along the side. And the minute, the first movement of the big toe is what I'm looking for. And in uh, Siobhan's case, it goes up very, very rapidly. So we can see it goes up rapidly, and you don't really need to go the whole hog after that. Similarly over here. You okay, Siobhan? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. For students, you should always keep an eye and reassure the patient and keep an eye on the patient's face in case you're inflicting discomfort. <laughs> but uh, she knows me well. Ready now? And again, the planter goes up, the, the toe goes up, or an extensor planter, very rapidly. One more time, Siobhan. That's great. So um, I will test sensation very briefly with the tuning fork. Now I'm going to put this at the top of your neck there. Can you feel that vibrating? Yeah. You can. OK. Now I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to place this on your foot. Can you feel it vibrating there? You can feel it there. OK, so, so some uh, loss of vibration there, implying posterior column loss on the right-hand side. Now, we do it on both sides. But for demonstration purposes, I just want to show the techniques. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take hold of your right big toe. OK? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to explain to you that that is up yeah. and that is down. Yeah. OK, close your eyes now. Can you tell me where it is now, up or down? 
You sure? Where is it now? One more time. Maybe one more. Good, okay. So proprioception is actually okay, um, but vibration sense is reduced. The next thing I'll do is probably do um, a pin prick, uh, but I won't use a pin. I'll use a toothpick. And again, not too sharp. I'm gentle sometimes. Can you feel that? Yeah. That's sharp. Is that sharp? Yes. <laughs> it's not meant to be too sharp. Close your eyes now. Can you feel me touching you there? Yeah? yeah? Okay, I'm trying to be gentle. Is that similar to the top, the one on the top of your chest there? Um, no, I'm not sure. Okay. And as I come up, does it, is it the same as the chest? Or is it less? Um, it's the same. About the same. Yeah. And over the other side, can you feel that there? No. No? no. Tell me if it changes. There. There. Yeah. Okay. From a motor perspective, Siobhan has a paraparesis, or a stiff or a spastic paraparesis, the differential for which is very wide. Um, from a sensory perspective, she has some loss of vibration sense to the level of the knee uh, on both sides. Uh, proprioception is normal and a variable pinprick sensation, but I don't, I'm not buying that it's a, a, a definite sensory level. Um, so the differential, as I say, for spastic paraparesis in a young woman uh, is wide, but uh, in, in, Ireland, in Ireland certainly, uh, and the UK, uh, the most common cause would be a demyelinating disorder, or MS. Uh, in an older population, you'd think about things like cervical spondylosis, um, or indeed uh, motor neuron disease, where it'd be motor signs only. The other differential is if you've got knee jerks that are brisk and ankle jerks that are absent with upgoing toes, that usually impi implies posterior column involvement, and that's things such as subacute combined degeneration of the core due to B12 deficiency. Um, or tabes dorsalis due to uh, syphilis. Uh, if there's pes cavus, another example would be Friedrich's ataxia could mimic these signs uh, with absent ankle jerks and present knee. And <coughs> in different parts of the world, uh, tropical spastic paresis, paraparesis, sorry, and um, you can also get hereditary forms of this condition called <coughs> hereditary spastic paraplegia. Okay. Now Siobhan is a little unsteady on her feet and that's due to the fact that she's got cerebellar involvement. Uh, when you're looking for cerebellar involvement, when talking to Siobhan, uh, her voice seems normal, but there can be a little staccato, um, uh, and this is a typical cerebellar voice. We'll discuss that in a moment, but the other signs you look for uh, in cerebellar disease are nystagmus in the eyes, as follows. So you look at my finger here, and at rest you look for square wave jerks, and then you look to your left, please. Hold that there, and you can see some nystagmus there, and to your right, and to your left. A few beats of nystagmus. I wouldn't overcall it. It could be physiological, but I think in the clinical setting, you can call it. Can you put your hands out straight in front of you, please? Spread the fingers wide and close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to keep them there. I'm going to tap one of your hands. Keep them in the same position, OK? Mm -hmm. Good. There's a little bit of overshoot there. Open your eyes now. And in your own time, I want you to touch the tip of your nose with the tip of that finger. Keep your eyes open now. Eyes open. Okay. Sorry. Touch your nose and touch my finger. Touch your nose, finger. I'm going to move my finger to try and catch out. Nose, yeah. to your nose, finger, eyes open. No, you're doing great. Nose, finger, nose, finger, nose, finger. So just a bit of intention tremor and slight bit of pass pointing uh, on the right and then you do right to left as before. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then um, she has some other cerebellar signs. Could you put your hands on top of one another like that? And just watch me first. I want you to take your right hand and turn it over like that. And now turn it backwards like that. Now up high and back and forth. That's it. Yeah. Now you have it. So turn. OK. Not quite. If you just put right hand on top of left and then turn it over and then back. Now you have it. Back. Now quick as you can. Up higher. That's it. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Okay, we're now going to examine Siobhan's walk or gait. And Siobhan has a cerebellar syndrome, and you can see that she's got, she walks tentatively, I think would be a nice phrase of saying it. She walks um, with a wide base gait, tending to fall to one side, and hence why Roshin is protecting her.
and with the feet together, we're trying to do Romberg's sign. So, and with the eyes closed now, Romberg's sign isn't, is not normally positive in cerebellar disorder, so the implication here is that she also has some posterior column involvement or some vestibular involvement. Okay? So you hold the patient and ask them to stand on their toes like that. And then you look for a foot drop and you run your foot under the foot like that. So there's no evidence of foot drop. Okay, so we might just ask her to walk away from us again and just leave, leave her on her own this time. Well, no, we just keep her. Just walk normally if you don't mind, Siobhan. Just walk back and then turn around and walk back to us again. So that's the main portion of this. So it's a wide base case. So she's holding her hands out widely to um, give her some sen sen sense of balance. But if you'll also notice that she turns, she's a little unsteady, so she must turn in a few steps. Come on back to us, Siobhan, thanks. And she also has a stiff gait. You can see the right leg is stiff and she's swinging it out in a circumducting manner. So in addition to a wide base cerebellar gait, turn around and walk away again, thanks. We'll have you exhausted yet. <laughs> Sorry, take your time. As you see, the right leg is stiff and it swings out to avoid catching the toe on the top. So that's what you'd see, so for example, in the left hemisphere stroke with the right leg like that. But Siobhan has a spastic paraparesis with cerebellar signs. So this is a combination of paraparesis. One more time, thanks, Siobhan. A combination of paraparesis with a wide base um, cerebellar gait and there are signs of the upper motor neuron signs of the legs and cerebellar signs throughout. Perfect. 